Can we use the Wing Dragon of Ra as a combo piece to swap life points and win the game on turn one? This video is special because I have not just one, but two decks to show off. Thank you to Justice Solaris for the suggestion, and now let's check out game one. We're starting off with one of the namesake cards of the deck in our opening hand, Reversal Quiz. By sending all cards in our hand and on our field to the graveyard, we can guess if the top card of our deck is a monster, spell, or trap, and if we guess it right, we swap life points with our opponent. We're still missing our Egyptian God card, but hopefully we can draw it later on. Let's start the combo by summoning Sublimation Knight. On top of having some really sweet armor, this guy equips himself with a Fire Warrior in our deck. In this case, Squeak Knight. Because he's a Union monster, he can special summon himself after being equipped. Let's equip Curse Bamboo Sword and then link up to a soul, Two Tales of the Noble Knights. Their first effect lets us add a warrior from our deck to our hand, and since Curse Bamboo Sword was sent to the graveyard when we Link Summoned, we can also snag another Bamboo Sword card from our deck. Now let's activate a soul's second effect. By burying a bunch of equip spells, we can special summon a warrior with an equal level while simultaneously thinning our deck even more. One of the equip spells we sent was another Cursed Bamboo Sword, so let's go ahead and grab Golden Bamboo Sword from our deck too. Now we can equip the original Bamboo Sword and activate it to thin our... or just fire off Golden Bamboo Sword to draw two cards. Sweet, we found an Ancient Chant. I probably should have activated the Bamboo Sword to thin our deck a little more, but never punished. Let's play the Ancient Chant to find Ra and Special Summon Renad to pick up Horn of the Unicorn. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, it will place itself back on top of our deck, which will let us guarantee we call the right card when we activate Reversal Quiz. So equip Renaud with the horn and activate Ancient Chant in Grave. Not that we need to, but I like seeing big numbers and this will pump up Ra's attack a little bit more. Speaking of big numbers, maybe you should hit that subscribe button. But finally, we can tribute everything for the legendary Wing Dragon of Ra. When Ra comes down, we can pay all but 100 life points and activate Reversal Quiz. This will send all the cards in our hand and on our field to the graveyard, and we already know the top card of our deck, so... Wait, that's not Horn of the Unicorn. Oh, I see what happened here. All the Egyptian gods have a line of text that says, When normal summoned, cards and effects cannot be activated. It's mainly there to avoid stuff like Solemn Judgment from countering the summon, but in this case, it actually worked against us and prevented Horn of the Unicorn from putting itself back on top of our deck. But all that aside, we did still manage to reveal a spell card, so swap life points with the opponent. <laughs> and the Fuma Shuriken, when it's sent to the graveyard from Reversal Quiz, will activate and deal the final bit of damage, winning us the game. So we proved that Reversal Quiz can work. But I wasn't super happy with this build because it required a 5 card combo just to work, which is pretty ridiculous. Now, we did have the Bamboo Sword drawing engine to help us get there, but we still had to guess at the end for the Reversal Quiz kill. So let's head back to the lab and try to come up with something a little more consistent. So we did prove that Reversal Quiz can work. This is a very important first step that I have forgotten with past Silly Strap videos. But ignoring that, let's review what Reversal Quiz really needs in order to win. 1. We need Reversal Quiz in hand or some way to search it. 2. We need a way to pay life points so when we swap, our opponent is left with almost nothing. And 3. Finally, we need a way to deal that last bit of damage to actually win the game. Now, Reversal Quiz being a generic spell card is not easily searchable. You can pull it out of your deck with a few specific cards, but they usually require at least one turn of setup. Since we're going for a really jank win con, I'd rather get this all done on turn one and give our opponent as few chances for interaction as possible. So I decided to just play all three along with a ton of deck thinners to increase our odds of having it in our opening hand. Paying life points presents a similar problem. <laughs> if you search Reversal Quiz on Yugipedia, you'll see the traditional method uses Pyramid of Light to pay 7,000 life points, and then activating Reversal Quiz the following turn with two copies of either Black Pendant or Fuma Shuriken. First off, that is already a four card combo that is not easily searchable. 
Now, this deck doesn't need to win any tournaments, it's just to prove it's possible and make you guys laugh. However, the more consistent these strats are, the easier it is for me to get footage, so I wanted to come up with something else. After some searching, there were two main options, the Winged Dragon of Ra and Number S39 Utopia Prime. Since it's an extra deck card, Utopia would increase the consistency quite a bit, because we don't have to play it in the main deck, so it would be more accessible than Ra. Plus, it would let us pay life points down to 10 and then go for the swap, which would be pretty hilarious. The problem is that there has to be a difference of 3,000 life points to start with, and to make it even harder, your opponent needs to have a monster on board in order to activate it in the first place. I tried for a long time to make something work with Garden Rose Maiden searching Black Garden to give our opponent a monster, but I just couldn't make it work. If you have any ideas, please let me know, because I would love to get this combo down even more. But with all that said, I decided to stick with Ra since it's easily searchable and Ancient Chant will give us an additional normal summon, which gives us a lot more freedom when we go for the combo. Plus, I get to clickbait Ra in the thumbnail. But the main problem with Ra is that we also need to have three monsters on board for the tribute summon but we'll come back to that. The final requirement is dealing that final tick of damage after we swap life points and send all of our cards to the graveyard. Black Pendant and Fuma Shuriken will still work, and we can search it up with a sold, but having more options is always better, so I went searching for other cards that dealt damage after being sent to grave, and I found Barbar. This Burning Abyss monster will deal 300 damage to our opponent by banishing other Burning Abyss monsters from our grave. Using some level 3 engines to get into Cherubini and Phantom Knight stuff would easily let us get 3 plus monsters on board for Ra. Plus, Phantom Knights are warriors that can also go into a sold if we need to search for our damage dealing equip spell. Altogether, this reduces the combo from 5 cards down to 3. So now that we have a solid direction for our deck, let's see how it does by checking out Game 2. Well, we have the combo in our starting hand, so let's see how it goes. We can start by using Ancient Chant to search Ra, and then summon Tour Guide from the Underworld. This is a pretty notorious combo starter because she will summon any level 3 fiend from our deck. In this case, Skarm Malabranch of the Burning Abyss. The monster we summon is negated, but that's actually a good thing in this case, since all of the Burning Abyss monsters normally just blow themselves up if you control a non-Burning Abyss monster. Since we have two level 3s, we can link up to Cherubini, Ebon Angel of the Burning Abyss. Let's go ahead and activate it to send Graf to the graveyard, who will then summon Seer from our deck. Now that we have another monster on board, we can link summon again for the Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish. It is actually pronounced Bardish and not Bardic. I know, I was surprised too. But fun fact, a Bardish is a medieval Russian polearm with an axe blade braced against the shaft for stability. So this axe should really look more like this. But historical accuracy aside, Rusty can send a Phantom Knight monster from deck to grave and set a Phantom Knight trap from our deck, which is huge for the combo. So Seer summons back Cherubini, and Rusty sends an Ancient Cloak to the graveyard and sets a Shade Brigandine from our deck. We can banish Ancient Cloak to search Silent Boots. Man, these Phantom Knight cards have funny names. Then we can summon Shade Brigandine as a monster and special summon Mr. Boots. And now that we have two warriors on board, we can link into a soul. I take a quick break here because I was trying to draw into a certain card, but I couldn't quite find it in this game, so I'll have to show it off later. Anyway, activate Isolde to bury a Black Pendant from our deck and Special Summon Renaud to add it back to hand. Now Summon Ra, pay all of our life points, and activate Reversal Quiz. We still have to guess correctly here, but with the heart of the cards, I think we can do anything. Well, that's anticlimactic. Let's try that again. After a few more attempts, play Reversal Quiz and call Spell this time? First try. Well, our three card combo did manage to work, but we still had to guess at the end, so let's take a look at one more game that has one of the flashiest combos I have ever managed to pull off. Game three. We have two of the three combo pieces, so we can at least thin our deck and hopefully draw into Raw with this Into the Void. And since you've seen the combo already, I'll run through it pretty quickly. Special Summon Terror Top, Search Takatomborg, Summon and Link Up to Cherubini. Bury a copy of Graf, and this time we'll summon Skarm before linking up to good old Rusty. 
We can do the Phantom Knight part of the combo to summon Shade Brigandine and Silent Boots, and then link into a soul. Thin our deck a little by grabbing another copy of Ancient Cloak, and now we have to make a choice. Since we started the combo with Terror Top, as crazy as it is, we actually haven't used our normal summon yet. So we could normal summon Tour Guide to thin our deck by one more card, but if we draw into Ra instead of Ancient Chant, we won't have another normal summon to finish the combo. Alternatively, we can fire off into the void right now and hope to draw into Ra or one of our searchers. I decide to just go for it and wow, that is Ra right off the top. I am glad I didn't go with the tour guide plan. Now that we have all of our combo pieces in place, let's activate a sold and bury Sword of the Deep Seated. Whenever this random old card is sent to the graveyard, it puts itself back on top of our deck. Unlike the first draft of this deck, since we use a sold at the end of this combo, it gives us the option to either prepare our deck with Sword of the Deep Seated or search Black Pendant for that final bit of damage. But you might be thinking, if we use the sold's effect to guarantee the reversal quiz, then where is our damage dealer? Would it surprise you if I said we already have that last bit of damage set up? Let's see how it goes. First, we'll summon Ra and pay all of our life points before sending all of our cards to the graveyard to activate Reversal Quiz. Well, we already know what the top card of our deck is. Sweet, we swapped life points with the opponent, but we don't have any cards left. Where is that final bit of damage? <laughs> well, put on your sunglasses because this is about to get flashy. When we move to our end phase, we have two triggers waiting for us. Skarm can search any level three fiend from our deck and Into the Void will discard our hand. Because of the way simultaneous effects work during the end phase, we can choose and resolve them in whatever order we want. So if we use Skarm to search Barbar first, Into the Void will force us to discard it, and finally Barbar will activate when it's sent to the graveyard, dealing that final chunk of damage to secure the victory. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and check out the Silly Strats playlist for more. I did things a little differently this time, kind of explaining some of my deck building process and showing some of my thoughts and goals when I make these silly strat videos. So if you liked that and want to see more of the thought process that goes into these videos, you know, I wouldn't mind some positive reinforcement in the comments, but that is going to do it. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you in the next one.